look around, Lord, I can see you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for
word and know that on you this morning, the God we serve, he is the great God. He's the great king. He's the one who blesses us and keeps us. He is the great God himself. And great is his name. His name is awesome. His name is great. And we serve the awesome and amazing God. And he has blessed us one more day. And so that's what we want to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you for blessing us one more day. The God we serve is such an awesome and such an amazing God. We come today to honor his name, to praise his name, and to magnify his name. For well, there is no name above this name. We serve the awesome and the amazing God, and He is the awesome. He is the amazing God. He has blessed us one more year, and I'm certainly glad about it. And guess what? He's blessed you one more year also. And let me tell you the good news is you didn't have anything to do with it. He blessed you in spite of you, in spite of your meanness, in spite of your bad attitude, in spite of stealing, robbing, and killing. God just kept right on blessing us because he is the awesome and amazing God. And we bless his name for giving us another chance. I burned up my second chance by the time I was 16 months old. God just kept giving me one more chance. Chance after chance. If you want to testify and tell the truth, you burned up your second chance after huh? so, But because of his mercy and because of his grace, God just keeps right on blessing us. And to that we are screaming out, Hallelujah! God keeps right on blessing us. In spite of us. In spite of our conditions, he keeps right on. Right? And God just keeps right on blessing us. It is preaching time. It is time to hear from heaven. It is time for God to speak to us. And we have a qualified preacher with us here today. For the last six months, I've been trying to chase this preacher down. <laughs> Look him up. Say, man, I called you. I left a message too. But you know when you got such an awesome preaching machine, you have to look and dig in order to find. You don't find diamonds just laying around on the seashore. You have to dig for them. Look for them. You have to seek out for them. So today I have my brother, Pastor Edward Perry here. We came up preaching at the Holman Street Church together. You know the story was more than 21 preachers all packed in there waiting to hear a word from the Lord. Yeah. And those of us who weren't called yet, we were, we were, we were bootlegging. Trying to tell folks we weren't called to preach. But because of the Holman Street Church and Pastor Manson, B. Johnson, we, we learned valuable lessons it was a great place for discipleship and learn evangelism. And now the baton has been passed because God has a way of passing the baton. And there passes Pastor Murray G. Martin. And he allowed this preacher to come and be a part of our service today. And I guarantee you, he will not disappoint. I said before and I say again, he is a preaching machine. And I told you last week that the purpose of the pulpit is because there are people in the room in the pit. And it's the responsibility of the pulpit to pull the people out of the pit. And I said to you also that every now and then the preacher needs to hear from the pulpit. Because the preacher is not perfect, therefore he needs to be pulled out the pit. And I want to thank God today for having the opportunity of being pulled and forced out of the pit. My brother, Pastor Elder Perry, has pastor at the Salem, Beth Salem Church in New York. He has taken all the necessary steps to be where he is. 
And now he is Christian Education Director at the Hope Street Church. Amen. He has been a youth pastor. He has been a youth minister. He has been a, a person sitting in the pews listening to the word of God. And therefore he is seasoned and he is ready as well as very serious about the word of God. Would you stand to your feet and help me welcome my big brother of the Holy Spirit Church, Pastor L. Perry. Found it, say I have it. 
And if you're still looking, say, hold on a minute. Amen. It reads on this wise. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Yes, From whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate yes. to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Yes, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? All right, Amen. All right. The word of the Lord is blessed and I'm just asking for your prayers for a little while on this morning as we focus on the thought progressing through the process in order to get to the promise. All right, all right. Progressing through the process in order to get to the promise. Dear God, we thank you for your word on today. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for this awaiting congregation. I ask now that your Holy Spirit would prepare their hearts to receive and that you would prepare the tongue of the preacher to proclaim. Yes. Lord God, we love you and thank you for all the many blessings you bestowed upon us on this day. Yes, yes. We ask that anything that you find within us that is displeasing to you or contrary to your will, Lord God, we thank you for your grace and mercy and ask that you wash and cleanse us all. And hear our prayer, O oh God, incline your ear unto us and give us your peace. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. We bless you in the holy, mighty, and matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Let the church say amen. amen. Progressing through the process in order to get to the promise. Uh, we must understand that in this life, anything that is of value and that is of a merit requires a process in order to get to it successfully and purposely. You're right. You're right. And so, uh, before we get into the meat of the word, I'd like to define a couple of things for you on this morning. Amen? Amen. And I'm asking you all to pray with me. So, let's look at progressing, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. uh, to progress means to advance or develop toward a better, more complete, or more modern state. In other words, you start at one point, and as you go through the process, you're advancing step by step and phase by phase in order to get to the ultimate goal, right. or in many cases, what we refer to as the promise. And how many of you know that God has made us a promise on today? Right. Amen. Amen. So we've got to keep moving. Then I, I want to look at the word process. So we, we understand to progress, we got to keep moving. Amen. Amen. You can't stay in one place. You, you can't stay still, but you've got to constantly move forward. And, and we're talking about it of a spiritual nature. Mm -hmm. So the next word is process. Right. So a process uh, is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. Right. So for those of you, and I know there are many of you into STEM processes, you know, you're familiar with the scientific process. Mm -hmm. and, and there are steps that you follow in the scientific process in order to conduct an experiment or in order to get certain results, in order to get to where you're trying to get, to, there's a process, a way of doing things. Yes, sir. And then lastly, we're going to deal with the word promise. So a promise is a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. In other words, as you progress through the proscribed process, at the end of the process, there's a promise, a reward, or an award that we will receive. Amen. Amen. I wonder if anybody here on today understands that one glad morning, yes, yes, yes. when this life is over, yes, yes, yes. when we've gone and progressed through the process, yes. there's something waiting for us yes. on the other side. Yes. Uh, 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 and there's a promise 
that God has made in his word. And how many of you know that God is not a man? That he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. If God made a promise to you, you can count on it. Yeah. So as we're looking at this process, I, I want us to, to look at the process of salvation. In the word of God, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. As believers, we have to understand that everything that has taken place in our life, every action, every reaction, everything good, bad, or indifferent for the believer, everything that happened is part of the process, and God has the power and the ability to cause it to work for our good. Now, now I want to be careful about that good. Now, good isn't always uh, defined as, as we as humans think of good. But, but for our good, it, the scripture says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So God causes everything that happens in our life through the process to work toward our good so that we may ultimately be conformed to the image of his son. All right, all right. In other words, so we can be just like Jesus. All right. Now for some of y'all who are long in the tooth like me and you grew up through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, there was a, a popular gospel recording group out of Houston called the Southeast Inspirational Choir. All right. And they had a popular song led by a local young lady, Miss Angela Bennett, and it was called Just Like Jesus. Right. And, and they, they did a spin on an old church hymn and it said, Jesus is getting us ready. For that great day. And I want to be just like him. So when you go through the process. The process will get you to where you need to be. And where we need to be is just like Jesus. The word says that we may be conformed to the image of his son. In fact that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So Jesus set the pace. Jesus established the process. And all we've got to do is follow the process in order to get to the promise. It says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now we get into the meat of the process. Now, 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 I, I, I need us to understand something, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. It says... Whom he did foreknow. That means who he knew before. Yes. Yes. He did predestinate. In other words, he, pre he predetermined yes. beforehand mm -hmm. to be conformed to the image of his son. Let's, let's talk about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful as believers not to get caught up in linear thought. Mm -hmm. Come on now. In linear thought, we expect things to work A, B, C, D, E. And to be easily explainable, easily definable, and easy to validate. But God is not a linear God. In fact, he's a paradoxical God. And by being paradoxical, meaning it's hard to understand. Uh, it, 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 some of the things that, that we know and understand about God almost seem absurd. They almost seem contrary. Because the scripture tells us that Jesus was fully God and fully man. All right, all right. That's a paradox. Right. Uh, it tells us that God is omnipresent. In other words, he's in all places but in one place. All right, all right. That's a paradox. Right. But what you have to understand is Genesis tells us, one, two, it says, in the beginning God. Right. So the fact of the matter is, the one who created existence doesn't have to explain his own existence. He is a paradox. I, I, I wish I had to. In other words, God is not confined by time, space, or matter. God is outside of time, yet he has the ability to work inside of time. That's a paradox. Come on, get somebody. I, 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 I. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He is God. So, so uh, even though he predetermined, in other words, God knew who was 
going to accept him. And, and he predetermined that when we accepted him, we would be conformed to the image of his son, no matter what. I, I wish I had a believer in that. You've you got to understand, you've got to know that you know that you know that when you enter into the process, if you stay with the process, continue to progress, you will get to the promise. It's not of our own volition. It's not of our own ability. Let, let, let me move on here. It's, it's not of our own might, but it's by God's grace. Process. I want to give you some key components of this process. We're going to take out the main components. We're going to explore it a little bit, and then I'm going to get out of your way. Amen? So, in the salvation process, the Holy Spirit uh, draws us once the word, seed of the word has been planted. Amen? Amen? And then a process called regeneration takes Amen. place, meaning we're born again. Right. And because we're born again... Because we're drawn by the Holy Spirit, we accept and profess Jesus Christ as Lord, thereby becoming justified. Yes, uh, so the justification process makes us right with God. Even, even though we were filthy in our sins, because of his blood, because of his power, we've been justified. And, and, and because of that justification, it says, for whom he justified, he also glorified. When we get to through the process and to the promise, God says we're going to be glorified. These old bodies that know sickness and pain and worry and regret and difficulty and aging. You can sing a song called There's a Leak. And my soul has got to move. But I've got another building. Not made by hand. That's the glorification. And Jesus as the scripture says, was the firstborn among the brethren. If you remember after the resurrection, mm -hmm. the scripture relates him entering to a room with his disciples. Yeah. Now, I'm not adding or taking away, but, but it doesn't tell us he opened the door, he knocked on the door, and but he was in the room. Yeah. It also tells us that he moved from one place to the other, and it didn't say he got on a mule. It didn't say right, that somebody right. carried him, but we know he got there. And then it shows him on the shore, right. cooking right. and preparing fish. In other words, there is a glorified body yes. awaiting you and I. Yes. That's the ultimate promise. Amen. And in that body, we shall never know sickness. Yes. We yes. shall never die. Hallelujah. And we shall dwell yes. in the presence of God Hallelujah. in his kingdom yes. for all eternity. Yes. Isn't that good news? Yes. Yes. So somebody said the promise. Yes. I, I, I'm working toward the promise. Yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So regeneration, justification, glorification. But before you get to glorification, we got a surgeoning over here. And as we're surgeoning, there is a process called sanctification. Do I have any witness? And in this sanctification process, it is the action of making or declaring something as holy. All right. Mm -hmm. The action or process of being freed from sin mm -hmm. or purified. Right. Now, now, let me talk about sanctification for a little while and then I'm going to be out of the way. So, as we go through this life, we've been justified by faith. Mm -hmm. But in the sanctification process, uh, I'm sure you've come across those folks. They get baptized today. And tomorrow, they're holier than everybody who's ever existed. Uh, they, they know everything spiritually, and they're critical and judgmental of everybody else. But I want you to know today that in the sanctification process, sometimes you're going to be up, and sometimes you're going to be down. Sometimes you're going to be sure-footed. But there are also going to be times that you stumble. And that's why we have Jesus. In this sanctification process, God is constantly working in us and on us to make us more like him through the power of his Holy Spirit. We're talking about progressing through the process to get to the promise. Let me get to my first point, lest I bore you and labor you too long. One of the most important steps 
in the process to the promise. In order to help you progress, number one is the pardon. I was born in sin. And I was shaped in iniquity in my mother's womb. But thanks be to God for the pardon. And that pardon comes through Jesus Christ. Uh, in other words, when we confess with our mouths yes, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, the scripture tells us that thou shalt. Yes, it's an affirmative, confirmed, declarative statement. Yes. Thou shalt be saved. Yes, John 3.16, everybody knows it. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There again comes the promise that goes through or comes as a result of the process. So the first step is you've got to be pardoned. We can't make it without Jesus. Except you enter into relationship, salvation, receiving Jesus Christ as Lord, you will not get successfully through the process because the pardon is the first step in the process. The second step in the process, I'm almost out of close, y'all. The second step in the process is partnership. Can I get a witness? There are some things we can't do by ourselves. A marriage... One person can't do a marriage by themselves. There must be an agreed partnership. Many businesses, one person has one skill and another has another skill. And in order to be successful in the process of business, it requires partnership. How many of you know we have a partner in this process of sanctification? Come on here, come on here. We have a partner. When Jesus taught about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, he said that Bringing what Jesus said to remembrance would be part of the Holy Spirit's ministry. Yeah. John 14 and 26, Jesus said, But the Comforter, yeah. which is the Holy Spirit, yeah. whom the Father will send in my name, yeah. he shall teach you all things and will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is our partner in the sanctification yeah. process. Yeah. He's constantly working on us yeah. and yeah. in us yeah. and through us to make us more like Jesus. Yes. And if we're going through the process correctly, every day, every week, every month, we ought to get a little closer. Yes. Sometimes you may yes. falter and fall back. Yes. But the good thing about the Holy Spirit is He's intelligent. Yes. He has remembrance and He can clean you up and fix you up, put you back on track and get you back to where you need to be. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here today. Also in this partnership, if you remember when Jesus was preparing to make his ascension after the resurrection, after the first chapter, and the disciples were with him, and they asked the question, when, when are you going to restore everything? You know, they, they were Jerusalem, the Israelites, the Jews had gone through uh, quite a few tribulations, and, and, and they were destroyed, uh, and, and they were not a powerful nation as they had once enjoyed mm -hmm. under King David and right. King Solomon. And they wanted to know, when was this King of Kings, Lord of Lords, going to restore all things? And Jesus said, listen, it's not for you to know. Mm -hmm. Things that are in God's control. Right. And in fact, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Right. You need to focus on getting into the process for which yeah. I called you. I made you a disciple for a purpose to help others as well as you go through the process. And in Acts 1 and 8, he told them point blank, he said, listen, and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost, somebody say thank you for the Holy Ghost, has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, locally, at home, in all Judea. You're branching out and, and in Samaria, places you don't want to go. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. That partner who is the Holy Spirit, he's going to help us in the sanctification process. So you've gotten your pardon. He's made you right. So you're qualified now. He's given you your partner. So now you've got the power and the strength, because we can't do it by ourselves, to work through the process. And so as we have this 
yes. power yes. from on high, right. we have to focus on developing in the principles. Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.15, children learn it in Sunday school and in Bible drill. Mm -hmm. yes. Study. Yes. Study. Can I say it one more time? Say it again. Study. We've got to spend time in the Word of God. For it is your manual, it is your guide, it is your navigation system to get through the process. See, we've never been this way before, but Jesus, who's gone on before us, through the power of His Holy Spirit, has set up a roadmap. A recipe, a guide, and instructions for us to get through the process. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly, rightly. Meaning in all thy getting, you get an understanding through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and then, as you, 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 you understand and study the word... Galatians 5, 22 and 25 tells you that there should be some development mm -hmm. in the process. Yes. But the fruit of the Spirit mm -hmm. is love, yes. joy, yes. peace, yes. long-suffering, oh, yes. gentleness, yes. goodness, oh, yes. faith, yes. meekness, yes. temperance. Yes. All right. If you are progressing yes. successfully through the process Folks ought to see some principles and some fruit developing in you. If you were the one who went off on a moment and cursed everybody else. I know. I hear you. You know I was a soul. Anyway, so if you would curse somebody out three years ago, if you're actively, productively in the process, you ought to have a little more temperament. Amen. Amen. A little more patience. Jesus. A little more self-control. If you were the type, you didn't like nobody. Mm. Everybody got on your nerves. Oh, you saw folks and you, you just, there ought to be some love developing Amen. in you in the process. Oh, I wish I had a witness. All joy. That's right. You don't need money and things mm -hmm. to keep you happy. All right. Uh, they make you comfortable, but the joy of the Lord should be your strength in it in all situations. And this one, peace. Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy for church folks. Y'all have to excuse me. That every time you see them, they've got a smile turned upside down. Their brows are furrowed, and they never have any good thing to say. They forget that. Every time you wake up Amen. and you see the bright sunshine, Amen. God has given you new mercies Amen. and he's given you another chance. Uh, you, you forget to understand that God Amen. is your vindicator and your Amen. protector and your keeper. No matter what situation you're going through, God will be right there. So you ought to have peace Amen. that passes all understanding. Amen. This is what develops in the process. Uh, and, and then... This one is important. Because the enemy is a deceiver. You know what I'm talking about. The chief liar. The chief deceiver. The chief accuser of the brethren. He wants to tell you that if you mess up in the process, you get kicked out of the process. But I stopped by to tell you that the devil is a liar. And 1 John 1, 8 through 10 uh, uh, confirms it. He says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we've not sinned, we make him alive. In other words, even when you stumble along the way. This is, you know, in, in the military, if you were not able to keep up, if you were not able to pass the test, they would phase you out or recycle you. And many times you got what was called a general discharge. And, and, and it would be stamped unfit for military service. But I'm so glad that I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And even though every now and then I may stumble and fall, God won't throw me away. He said he would never leave me nor forsake me. But all I've got to do is come 
to myself. Talk to God about it. He'll clean me up and he'll make me new and put me right back in the fight. Process. And then the last thing, and I'm going to leave you alone. So you've received the pardon. Mm -hmm. God has blessed you with the partnership with his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You are studying the word of God and the principles. Mm -hmm. and, and you are developing a mindset and a character that's just like Jesus. And now that you have all of that, the fourth segment of the process is you've got to put it into practice. Right, right. Amen. You can't just be hearers of the word only. But you've got to be doers. And listen, a lot of us think we, we've got the rest of our lives. Let me explain that. Time is getting shorter than many of us think. Time, time is winding down. That's why Psalm 90 and 12 it says, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Use the time that God has given you wisely. And in this time, and in the process, we've got to be about the Father's business. Because one day he's coming back. Amen. And, and, and the thing about it is, we know that works don't get you into heaven. Jesus paid the price on Calvary. In fact, he completed the work on Calvary because whatever he said, it is finished. So the process was patented, it was put in place, and set up for you and I to you. Now that's something in the workplace, corporate America, called Lean Six Sigma. Yes, sir. Where they, they, they look at processes and find ways to improve them and make them more efficient so that really the bottom line is you get more money. But I stopped by to tell you that it's not so easy in this process of sanctification. Sometimes there's going to be some rough patches. Sometimes you're going to have to go around the long way. But ultimately, if you stay in the process, you'll get to the promise. For this is not sprint. Anyone who got in the race and thought it would be over soon, because see, in, in, in track I was a sprinter. I didn't like that long distance stuff. It required too much wind, too much energy, too much stress. But in this process, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Amen. But I promise you today, and I'm going to take my seat. If you stay in the race, yeah, yeah. if you hold on yeah. to see what the end is going to be, God has promised us yeah. that at the end of the journey, yeah. there is a reward waiting for us. Yeah. And listen, many a soldier in the process yeah. has transitioned yeah. from earth yeah. to glory. Yeah. They are awaiting the great return. Yeah. Where is Jesus will come. Yes. For I remember Paul telling the church at Corinth, uh -huh. he said, I, I tell you a mystery. Uh -huh. yes. We shall not all sleep, oh, right. but we yes. shall be changed. Yes. Listen, yes. just, just, we're going to be changed. Yes. And, and the scripture, when he wrote to the church mm -hmm. at Thessalonica, mm -hmm. this was the promise he gave to him. Mm -hmm. He said, the Lord himself yes. Yes. shall descend from heaven. Yes. With the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ, they're going to get up first. And any of us are still hanging around in the process, we're going to be caught up to meet them in the middle of the air. I'm so glad that I know the process. And I'm so glad that I've got a partner as I make my progress. He promised he would never leave me. He promised never to leave me alone. He walks with me through the storms. He walks with me 
Street and Fort Peter. He says, I press. How many of you know there's a blessing in the pressing? And that regeneration 
is taking place, but you want to access the park. And so it is that we want to extend to you the invitation to the discipleship. That you would come today and begin your process to the promise. And listen, the good thing about it is it's not like one of those uh, uh, MLM type, pyramid type uh, processes. When you enter into this process, God will give you clear access to the partnership, clear access to the principles, and will allow you to fully practice the process that is necessary. So won't you come today? We first invite you to come into the family of Christ. And then, of course, you have a great ministry field right here at the New Beginning Church under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Matthew Davis. So won't you come? Is there one today? Listen, Psalm 90 tells us that we need to watch the time. Be mindful of the time. Tomorrow is not promised for you. In fact, we used to say tomorrow, but the next hour is not promised. God has no respect of person or age. In the cemetery, there are short graves and long graves. There are long dashes and short dashes. But come to Jesus while you have time. Won't you come? Won't you come? He'll make your life brand new and he will take care of you in the process. Won't you come? today. Listen, don't worry about what you did on yesterday, even what you did before you got here. Because as Pastor said, he's not just a God of a second chance, but he's a God of another chance. I know this because if he'd only given second chances, I would have been lost. But yes, in the process, he gave me another chance. You can come today. Know that it is our privilege to Jesus Christ to offer, but it is your responsibility to either accept or reject. So may the word be planted richly in your heart and may the Holy Spirit continue to cultivate it. God bless you and God keep you. May God pray. God has, has tremendously blessed us. I want to thank God for the preacher. God has been for the Lord. He pulled me out of the picture today. He pulled me out of the pit. Did he pull you out of the pit today? He regretted it. He regretted it out of Bible studies. He preached the word of God. He encouraged us. He blessed us. And we're glad about it. We're glad about it. Thank God. Long live Pastor Eric Carroll. Thank God for this. The man of God who has walked our way. Today has blessed us again. Now you see why I was chasing him around. Calling, I was getting ready to call his wife. I already called his pastor. I'm getting ready to call his wife. I'm, I'm trying to get to 411 to, to uh, get in touch with this man. Hallelujah to the Lord. God has blessed us again. New beginning, God has favored us. God has tremendously favored us. He has, he has favored, he has favored, favored us today. 
you're pressing your way through the process. And you realize that the process is not always easy. But you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, God in the third person available. Yeah. It's a part of that. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much for, for blessing us here today. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes offering and sacrifice. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes offering and sacrifice. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way up in the air and you will be served. If you need an envelope, raise your hand and you will be served. If you want to give electronically, if you want to give electronically, you can do so by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. You see, Pastor Perry is like me. Whenever it comes to electronic transfers, he looks to the woman behind him and says, Thank you, you know this. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your offering, it may be here this time next month. If you want to mail it in, mail it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Post office will go up every two, three years, or every year and a half. They just keep going up, and the mail keeps going down. So if you want to mail it, you can mail it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for these givers. We thank you for every gift. We thank you for every person who intends to give. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless our gifts. Bless us as we give. And bless us, Father God, to follow your principle of giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's read these scriptures together. These, these verses together. Whosoever sows sparingly will reap also sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will reap also bountifully. Each one must give as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. Why don't you decide to stand? And follow the first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrifice of us. May I just start to stand. Follow the first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrifice of us. Made away. Yes, he has. He has done. He has done great things. He has done great things. Great things. He has done. Yeah. I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be a witness. Witness. Done great things and we're gonna witness them. Let it shine, let it shine. Shine, shine. I'm gonna let my He's done great things for me. Yes. 
Father God, to lay your hands on us. And bless us, Father God, to be recipients of your blessings. And Lord, we ask you to bless us to glorify you and magnify you in all that we do. For this we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The reason why you see Robert Bart from Berger on our prayer list because his wife Betty of 68 years went home to be with the Lord. And let me tell you, folk don't last Brother Carter for 62 hours. Yeah, yeah. 68 years of being with the same woman, 68 plus years of being with the same woman, she went home to be with the Lord. And now he is in rehabilitation, so he needs our prayers. So we want to lift that family involved in prayer. We want to lift the added. Uh, Brother James Whitlock, we want to lift him in prayer. It's the father of Brother Kevin Whitlock and the father-in-law, Sister Katrina Whitlock. We want to lift them, lift them in prayers because God is a healer. I tell you, God is a healer. He is. God is a healer. And the 
Bible teaches that it's the church praise God will answer. So we want to lift them, lift them, lift them in prayer. Amen. Again, thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much for being with us today. Won't you come and say the last words? Before you come, we need to do the birthdays. Is there a birthday list on there? We need to sing happy birthday. If your birthday was in January, or is in January, why don't you stand? Let us sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. God bless. Hallelujah. We got one person standing. You want to tell us what God has done for you and how many years God has done that for you? The one person always look back. We got another person in the back. Well, the Lord spared me for 72 years. 72 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. 72 years. Did you deserve it? Yes. God no, just, God just blessed. He blessed you. Hallelujah. This young man here. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> By the grace of God, I'm 68. 68 years old. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm Looking forward to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we, we call the Ganassa Father Time. We got about 48 children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. So he's Father Time himself. So God has blessed Father Time again and we're glad about it. God has, has tremendously blessed. I told him if his family come to church, they, <laughs> oh, it, will, it will triple our congregation. Amen. Hallelujah. We, so we looking forward to the Asa family showing up. Amen. For his birthday before his month is over. Amen. Amen. Show up. Show up. Show up for, for his birthday. Bible study is still left in his month. He's still show up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Pastor Mary, will you come and, and have a final word for us, please? Amen. All glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Davis, Amen. for the opportunity to worship with you all. Amen. I had a wonderful time. You all have a beautiful facility. You're doing a great work under the great leadership of your visionary pastor. Continue to do the work. You've got a, a wonderful first lady that is walking right by his side and I pray God ever blesses you. I thank God for my wife Raina and my twin sons Edward II and Elijah uh, being here with us as well. May God ever bless you. Let us stand and recite our mission and business statement and you will do the benediction. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you, Pastor Jerry. Amen. And of course, we'll see y'all on March 12th. Let us look unto the Lord. Most gracious Heavenly Father. We come today to say thank you. Thank you. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, for what our ears have heard, but mostly for what our hearts have felt. Yes. God, we thank you for your word and your spirit. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity, the purpose, and the process. Yes. Now continue to keep us, Lord, and continue to strengthen us. As we leave this place yes. and are dismissed, let us never be dismissed from your presence. We ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead God and protect us. Now we ask that the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit will rest rule and abide within our hearts now and forevermore till we shall meet again either here or over there in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you.